Y'all will uh, have to forgive the background here. We are still doing a lot of construction. I know I've said that in several of the videos, but I can't seem to get anything done because for one, it just keeps raining. And then my truck has been in and out of the shop for a, kind of a ridiculous issue. But <laughs> now for those of you that know about 5.9 Cummins and, and the second gens, the VP pump finally went out. So, which is a real common thing. Um, <laughs> it's kind of frustrating. And, uh, and this, truck is now having a transmission issue, which is actually, even though Dodge is not notorious for building great transmissions, this is the second transmission this truck is on, uh, but the uh, transmission is having a problem that is kind of a fluke issue. So um, anyways, we'll we'll see, maybe, maybe doing a manual transmission swap on that, which would be a lot of fun and a good video. But uh, anyways, <clears throat> what I wanted to talk about was security. So we, uh, we deal a lot with this on the farm, right, guys? So we, we deal a lot with things like trespassers and uh, and dogs and, and whatever else coming up here. And so, um, you know, having a, uh, a security plan is very important. And so I was watching Patera on uh, Appalachia Homestead or Appalachia Farm. I don't remember. One of the two. Anyways, I'll put a link down to her channel. She's got like got a massive channel. She's got like 350,000 subscribers. She's got this uh, phenomenal channel. Um, and she's just entertaining. She watch. She's got a nice personality, and so it always just I don't know. It's kind of she's bubbly, like a lot like Amanda Land, and so it's just kind of fun to watch her, right? <clears throat> but uh, anyway, she's talking about security, and and specifically, she was talking about women, and it got me thinking. I was like, ah, you know what? Really, we should be talking about this because y'all know we teach here on the farm. We teach uh, weapons training. I've got personal protection classes. We've even got, if you're a real estate agent in Alabama, we've got a CE course for you guys now that got approved this morning for uh, continuing education by the by the real estate board of the Alabama Real Estate Commission. So that way it actually qualifies as, as continuing education for them, uh, which is really nice. And Amanda Lynn, oh, sorry, getting an alert here. Uh, Amanda Lynn, uh, for those of y'all that don't know, she's a realtor here in Alabama and, uh, and, and specifically in the Birmingham area. And so, she, you know, that's that's kind of a big thing for her is making sure that she can get like CE classes, stuff like that done. It's always kind of a pain for them. Uh, and sometimes those can be pretty pricey. But anyways, um, so this is something that we take very uh, seriously. This is very important to us and something that we want to want to look at. So, you know, there's things that you can do that people should be doing. And we've had incidents on our farm of trespassers and people coming on. Um, and that has gotten less and less as we've been able to get more infrastructure in place. You know, one of the things is when I when, when I bought this place, it was you know just completely wooded, so there was no fencing, nothing, and so it was just it was it was wooded. It was easy for somebody to get to the house. I mean, they could walk from one end of the farm to the other with nobody ever seeing them, um, assuming they could make it through the brush. So, anyway, so a lot of y'all are looking at places like that. You're looking at you have houses that are maybe maybe lack some of the security infrastructure that you want, and so there's things that that we can look at that we can do that are real cheap and real effective. Um, but let's talk about the the first thing, and the first thing is is we we work our security kind of from an inward out portion, right? So we don't necessarily start with like the perimeter fencing and then work our way in. We kind of want to work uh, more inward out. If that makes sense. So first thing is looking at getting training, right? Learning how to use firearms and stuff like that, uh, and getting some quality training from from decent instructors. And y'all know. I mean, I'm holding up a five shot revolver. I'm not real big on these, but it's nice when I'm in gym clothes and I just get done working out. This is what I carry. So um, <clears throat> when I go for a run, this is the gun that I take. Normally I, I have a, a, what's called a, it's very similar to a Glock 19, it's called a shadow systems. But um, anyways, that's, that's generally what I carry, but I digress. Okay, so first thing we can do is we can look at some training. Now, even if you don't like guns, you don't have to like guns, but you can look at some personal protection training. Uh, stuff, stuff just teaching you how to do situational awareness. There's classes you can take like Krav Maga, which are really focused on, you don't have to go become a black belt in uh, this martial arts to actually be able to do anything with it, right? Yeah, watching people that are, you know, black belts in Taekwondo, yeah, it's impressive to see them kick a bag, uh, but you know, those people, they tend to have problems when they actually get in the ring, right? The guys that, that do good in the ring are guys that are like, you know, judo and jujitsu and um, that were wrestlers and stuff like that. Like they tend to be the guys that, that are tough. And I used to fight in college, they're never very good. That's why I carry a gun, uh, but um, they, 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 those guys uh, tend to be really the ones that that win when you when you get into the ring with them, right? So, so the, that's really the stuff to look at. But Krav Maga, Krav Maga teaches 
more of a mindset for those of you that aren't familiar with it. It was developed by the Israelis, but it teaches more of a mindset of like, hey, how do we use this as a weapon? How do I use this this pin as a weapon? And how do I how do I effectively use a kubaton or whatever? And I so I can put this, and then all of a sudden now I can go for soft tissue tissue, and I don't have to have a lot of training to put a kubaton on my hand and bash somebody ten times in the neck right to get them off me. And uh, and so that's really what it focuses on. It focuses on how do we do this uh, with having kind of I don't want to say lack of training, but like minimal training and, and get somebody effectively able to handle themselves in a either life or death or just a dangerous or precarious situation, right? So getting some training is the first step. And that training should extend to weapons training. It should be uh, personal protection, self-defense training, and it should include things like situational awareness training. And, you know, Amanda and I, we just went and took a class on a active shooter response class, right? It was a lecture class, it was about three hours long. Actually wasn't very good. I was a little bit disappointed with it. It wasn't uh, super earth shattering. Um, but either way, it was worth going and taking the class. And it was worth sitting down for three hours and lecturing and getting a chance to talk to the instructor and just increasing my knowledge and my skills, okay? So get training, that's, that's your first step. Oh my gosh, guys, getting alerts like crazy. Okay. So next thing is that we want to look at, if we want to look at how do we secure our home, right? So again, moving beyond firearms, what do we do? Well, we can look at things like alarm systems, closed circuit security cameras, right? Things that aren't connected to a Wi-Fi that somebody can tap into. Uh, we want things that are hardwired in that are much, much more difficult to tap into and that are placed appropriately, right? You don't hardwire in a camera that's at your security gate that is easy for somebody to tap into, right? That can cut into that line and splice into it if they know if they have the electronic knowledge to do that, that would be a mistake. So you put it up on a post that's on the inside so that it sees down, uh, so it makes it much, much more difficult to do. And then you have another one that can see the, uh, the face of the person driving up. And so you have a scene camera as well as one that points to the face. So you have to think about this a little bit and actually have to put a little bit of thought in how these cameras and these alarm systems go into place. Okay, so, so alarm systems, quality alarm systems. Good locks on your house. So most locks that you buy, like quick set locks, are those ones that you can get that allow you to rekey them yourself to anything. Those are really, really simple for even a, a you don't have to be a locksmith. You can watch a five minute YouTube video on this. Uh, my brother's a locksmith or was a locksmith for so he's taught me a lot of this stuff. But the the simple fact is is that a quality lock, getting a good lock, and then going to a locksmith, go to a locksmith in town, and they can do a hardening on those locks and they can make them much, much more difficult to pick. And that they can, yes, they can still be picked, but you have to have a lot more skill involved to do it. And let's just be real, most burglars have either a very minimal lock picking skill or none at all. And so if they have a minimal, we just wanna stop that. If they have none, then we wanna stop that because they're gonna kick in the door or you know use something to, uh, to shove it in. In that case, you have physical security barriers. There's things that uh, you can buy that, brackets that you can buy that go around the lock, the deadbolt, to actually strengthen the door there. Uh, we can put the brackets up where it mounts on the floor and it actually is like a little toe kick thing and it keeps the door from getting open. Chains, those little chains are worthless, right? Because they're only as good as those screws. Mounting things like three and a half inch deck screws in the hinges as well as the door jam. Uh, instead of using the little itty bitty screws that the lock come or that the uh, the hinges come with, that's what we want to focus on. So uh, making sure that you are using uh, appropriate techniques to secure your house making sure that windows actually have locks on them and that you're using those locks. A lot of people leave those undone and then they can just be slid up. And most of those can be fairly easily beat with a Coke can. So we wanna make sure that our windows are installed correctly and that we have nice windows, right? If you have old metal windows that are real easy, it takes nothing but a Coke can. You can you just rip the Coke can and you can slide it up there and uh, and jimmy that lock super, super easy. Uh, somebody did that on my house in El Paso and broke in. So. You want to focus on putting some quality windows in there. If you are in a rental property or something like that, there's ways that you can secure those. There's products that they make that allow you to secure those windows. I've even seen people put screws in them, but then you're screwed in case of a fire, uh, although you can break a window. Uh, so I didn't realize the fire code tells you you have to be able to open it, but it's easy enough to break a window, guys. So I don't worry that much about that. But anyways, <clears throat> that's what you, uh, at least not in my bedroom. My kid's bedroom, five-year-old's bedroom, something like that would be a different story. But in, in, in my bedroom, not, not as big a deal, right? I can break a window out. Okay, 
So securing our windows, securing our doors, getting a perimeter alarm system, making sure that we do simple things, right? Like where we have that, that the pull cord for your, for your garage door. If your garage doors are closed, that pull cord is all the way over the edge. And what people do is they, they stick a wire coat hanger up there and they can pull that and then all they gotta do is open it. It takes 10 seconds and nobody will ever notice that, right? Because all you're doing is somebody's walking by and they swipe it. It's really, really easy to do. So take that pull cord and cut it off. Get rid of it entirely. You don't need it. If you need to disengage that, you can reach your hand up there. Why that pull cord is there is ridiculous. You don't do that often enough to need that, right? That's like a, there's a problem with my garage door opener thing. So get rid of that crap, get it out of there and just cut that string off and be done with it. <clears throat> okay, so getting rid of tools in your garage. Um, this is one thing. So a lot of people use their garage as their workshop, right? And so this is kind of actually a problem because you give all the tools in there that if somebody gets inside your garage, even if that door to your house is locked, they then have the tools there to get in your house and open your safe. So securing tools in a way that they are not readily available is ideal. I realize a lot of people don't have the option to do that. And so you, maybe you don't have a barn that you can store tools in. And so you, you may not have an option to do that. Uh, but little things that you can do to help prevent that is locking your tool chest, right? Nobody ever actually locks their tool chest. They come with a key, lock them and secure those tool chests, right? The only people that actually do that are people that have really small kids and they're worried about their kids getting in there. Uh, but locking those tool chests is actually an important safety feature for your house to keep people from going in there, getting a big crowbar, and then uh, whether inside that garage, there's nobody that can see them. So they have a lot of time in there. Uh, now realize when they break in, they're adrenaline's rushing and they're panicking, right? So they're gonna be looking at doing it and moving as fast as possible. So anything you can do to slow them down, I realize those locks on those tool chests are not hard to break. Anything you can do to be able to slow them down um, increases the chance that you get them to go away before they find anything, right? So the average burglary lasts, I wanna say it's like seven to 12 minutes uh, because they wanna get out of there before the cops come. Now, the average police department response time is about 12 to 15 minutes. So uh, they wanna get out of there before that time comes. It's interesting how those two correlate. Right, so that's what we're that's what we're looking at is we're looking at okay, can I slow them down for 12 minutes of time? Right, that's that's really all I want to do. Okay, so then we move out from our house. Now we've got our farm and our property and everything. So keeping barns locked, putting fencing up, uh, even things like electric fencing. I got it. They can be beat. They can be all that it takes is a pair of wire clippers and they can cut them. Uh, it's one more thing that they have to go through, and that's all we're doing. We're making our house harder, clearing vegetation around from our house so that we can see, putting motion sensing lights up. So so that when they walk up, when somebody walks up in the middle of the night, that hits them like a spotlight and then all of a sudden they feel like a cockroach in the light, okay? That's all we're trying to do. And it goes back to the same theory as the bear, right? The bear that uh, you're, you're trying to escape from from your friend, that old, that old joke, right? Oh, I don't have to outrun the bear, I just have to outrun you. That's what you're trying to do. You're trying to outrun your friend who's your neighbor down the street who doesn't do any of this, who has bushes growing up on his house, whose yard is not maintained or manicured so it looks like nobody's living there. He's got a week's worth of mail piled up. And they've got you know cheap quick set locks that anybody can identify from the, from the driveway. It's, it's very open for somebody to come break into. And it's in a high enough end neighbor. This is a problem. So this is where you end up. When you've got somebody that's living in a 300, 400, 500,000 dollar neighborhood and they have big glass front doors that the alarm system is visible right from the front door, right? The keypad for the alarm system is visible right from the front door. And that's not the issue. It's not that most people can, or that a crook can, can break in there and if they know where it is, they can go ahead and disarm that alarm system. Guys, if somebody has put enough thought into disarming that alarm system, then the, the reality of it is, is that they are, it doesn't matter where the alarm system is in the house. If they know how to beat those alarm systems, they're going to beat that alarm system. That is a really takes some specialized knowledge to do. Um, that's not what that, why you don't put that near the door. The reason you don't put that near the door is because most times homeowners that have alarms, about what I think they, they figure, I think ADT figures about 70% of the time, they actually set it when they leave the house or when they go to sleep, which means that alarm is more of a talisman and the big, you get the majority of the benefit from the ADT sign out front. So that's why you put the, you don't put the alarm system, the, the, the panel right there at the front door, because then somebody can see that it's not armed. That's the issue that you're running into with it. So that's, or I should say, that's not the only issue, but that's the bigger reason that we do that, right? Obviously the secondary reason is it makes it harder for somebody to find and be able to hack into. But again, the amount of people that know how to do that is very, very small that are willing to break into your house. And you would have to have almost a reason for somebody to come after you, like, like you're a big bank CEO or something like that. So 
We're farmers, we're simple folk, and uh, that's not what I'm worried about. I just, you know, want, if I forget to turn my alarm on, I don't want the burglar to be able to see that I forgot to turn the alarm on. But uh, I know we're good about it. I'm sure y'all are, so because you're watching this video, uh, but just realize the majority of people are not. So anyways, okay, so those are just some quick tips that you guys can do. Again, this just when Tara was talking about this with, with people coming up on squatters and stuff like that coming up on the homestead, just got me thinking. I've got a lot of people that watch this channel that have homesteads. These are just some quick things that you guys can do to uh, take care of things at your, at your farm and at your homestead and make things a little bit safer and get some training. Y'all, I really appreciate you guys watching. Make sure and like and subscribe to the channel if you have not already done so. We will have better backgrounds coming here soon as we get some of this construction done. So uh, just bear with us. Love y'all. Talk to you later.